Welcome back to the series on how math is used in construction. In this lesson, we'll be looking at painting, flooring, and roofing. Let's begin with an illustration of painting. A room is 12 feet by 18 feet with an 8 foot ceiling. There's a door, which is 3 feet by 7 feet, and a window, which is 3 feet by 5 feet. The paint can says it can cover 400 square feet per can. How many cans of paint should we buy? So let's begin with the walls. So if we measure the distance around the whole room, it's 12 feet plus 12 feet plus 18 plus 18. So that's the four walls for our room, which gives us 60 feet. We'll take the 60 feet, multiply it by 8 feet, which is our height, and we get 480 square feet. We could also calculate each wall independently. So 12 feet times 8 feet plus 12 feet times 8 feet plus 18 times 8 plus 18 times 8. It would come to the same uh, 480 square feet. Now we're going to calculate the door. 3 feet times 7 feet is 21 square feet. 3 feet by 5 feet for the window gives us 15 square feet. We can subtract those from the 480 and we get 444 square feet for the walls. Now remembering that each can of paint can only cover 400 square feet, and I have 444 square feet to cover, I'll need to buy two cans. This is something we need to remember all the time when we're doing real world problems, because the store won't sell partial cans of paint, partial bundles of shingles. So in many cases, we need to round up so think through it logically. Do I need to round this up? Do I need to round it down? Or, or do I need to keep the value the same? Okay, another painting example. Imagine that you need to paint a living room and you want to calculate a price for paint. You will paint the ceiling as well, but it will be a different color than the walls. The room is 24 feet by 32 feet. The long walls are nine feet tall and the ceiling slopes up to 14 feet high in the center. There is an entrance from the hall, which is five feet wide and eight feet high. And there are four windows along one wall, which are each five feet by seven feet. Each can of paint covers 400 square feet and costs $30.97. Let's begin with the walls. So we have two walls that are 24 feet long and nine feet high. We have the equivalent of two walls that are 32 feet long and nine feet high. So at this point, we're not taking into account the triangular portion at the end. So we're just imagining we're painting nine feet high all the way around. That would come to 1,008 square feet. Now let's look at the gable ends, which are the triangular sections on the long end of the room. So we need to calculate these as triangles. So the height of our triangles is 14 minus 9. So the triangle itself is going to be 5 feet high. The room is 24 feet wide on that end, because that's going to be the narrow end. So 5 times 24 divided by 2 because it's a triangle. But then we can multiply by 2 because there's two ends. This comes to 120 square feet. The entrance is 5 feet by 8 feet, so that comes to 40 square feet. The windows are 5 by 7, and there's 4 of them, which comes to a total of 140 square feet. So when we take the 1,008 square feet for the walls, 120 square feet for the gable ends, subtract 40 for the entrance, 140 for the windows, we come to 948 square feet. Now let's look at the ceiling. This one is not as easy because it's sloped. So for this, we're going to use Pythagorean's theorem. And we see that C squared is equal to 5 squared, the height of our triangle, plus 12 squared, which is half of the span, because we're only measuring from the peak to the edge. And we get c squared is equal to 169. So next we need to square root this so we can find c. So the square root of 169 is 13. So this means the sloped ceiling has a length of 13 feet from the eave to the peak. So to find the area of that, we're gonna multiply by two because there's two sides to the ceiling. Multiply by a length of 32 and we get 832 square feet. To convert this into how many cans, we need to take our amount of area, 
948 square feet for the walls, divide by 400 square feet per can, and we get 2.37 cans. For the ceiling, 832 square feet divided by 400 square feet gives us 2.08. And we can't combine these cans, because if we added them together, that would be about four and a half cans. But these are two different kinds of paint, so we can't combine those quantities. So that would give us six cans when we round both up to three cans each. Six times 3097 gives us 18582. Now remember, this is not the complete cost of repainting. We're only looking at just the paint. Here's an example of flooring. Jessica is planning to renovate her apartment and wants to install vinyl plank flooring. Her kitchen measures 3 meters by 4.5 meters, and the entryway measures 6 meters by 4 meters. The flooring she would like costs $79.84 per case, and each case will cover 20.06 square feet. How much will it cost for new flooring for these two rooms? When we're doing conversions, 1 meter is equal to 3.3 feet. Therefore, 1 square meter is equal to 10.9 square feet, because if we picture a square that is one meter on each side, that's 3.3 times 3.3, which is 10.9. So the kitchen measures three by four and a half, so that gives us a total of 13.5 square meters. 13.5 square meters times 10.9 square feet per square meter gives us 147.2 square feet. Six meters times four meters gives us 24 square meters. 24 square meters times 10.9 square feet per square meter gives us 261.6 square feet for the entryway. We add those together and we get 408.8 square feet. So now we need to see how many cases that is. So 408.8 divided by 20.06 square feet per case gives us 20.4 cases or a minimum of 21 cases. That's very minimum because that doesn't leave much room for any wastage. We'll probably better to get more, but this gives us our bare minimum. And 21 cases at 79.84 per case is going to cost us 1,676.64. Again, remember this isn't the complete cost. There's underlay in different materials that you will probably need in order to complete the project, but this is just for calculating the flooring. So here's an example of roofing. So Dave needs to replace the asphalt shingles on his house. The house is 42 by 56 feet. The eaves extend two feet past the walls and the roof has a slope of 712. Dave is trying to decide which roofing would be a better deal over a 40 year period. So his first option that he's looking at is the Camelot shingles, which cost 4085 per bundle and each bundle covers 45 square feet and have a lifespan of 25 years. He's also looking at VicWest colored metal roofing, which costs $8.85 per lineal foot with 36 inch coverage. This means that each sheet is 36 inches wide and it's $8.85 for every foot long of that sheet you buy. Expected lifespan is 45 years. So the first thing we need to do is to calculate the actual length or and area of the roof. So for that, we're going to need Pythagorean theorem again. So we need to find the length of our right angle triangle. So 42 plus 2 plus 2, because we have two feet for each eave on each side, gives us a total span up for the roof of 46 feet. And with a slope of 712 and a half span of 23, because half of 46 is 23, we want to find the height of that peak in the middle. Uh, 23 times 7 divided by 12 gives us 13.4. So it would have a height of 13.4 from the bottom of the truss to the peak in the center. So now we can use those numbers to calculate the actual size of the roof surface itself. The 23 squared plus 13.4 squared gives us 708.56. We'll take the square root of that to find C, or the length of the slope of the roof, and we get that that's 26.6 feet. So to find the total area of the roof, 
we're going to take 26.6 times 2, because we have two sides to our roof. We're going to multiply that by 56 plus 4, because the roof is 56 feet long and then 2 feet on each end for eaves overhanging. And we come to a total of 3,192 square feet. So first let's calculate the shingles. So 3,192 square feet for each 25 square foot bundle gives us 127.7 bundles. So we'll round that to 128. Again, this is minimal. You have to have very little waste in order to pull that off. But this will be the minimum times $40.85 for each bundle comes to 5,228.80. But remember, this only lasts for 25 years and he wants to know over a 40 year period. That means we're gonna have to replace the roof twice. So 5,228.80 times two comes to 10,457.60 for the whole 40 year lifespan. So let's compare that to the metal. For the metal, we're gonna think how many sheets we need. So 56 feet long plus the four feet, two feet for each end, gives us the length of the roof we're gonna to have to cover with sheets. Remember each sheet is three feet wide. So when we take 56 plus four, which is 60, divided by three, we get 20 rows. So we need 20 rows of sheeting. So 20 rows of metal, each row is 26.6 feet long, so each sheet, and then there's going to have to be two of those because we have two sides to our roof. It comes to 1,064 lineal feet of roofing. The other way to figure this out is that we can take the 3,192 square feet that we already calculated for the shingles. And if you think about the metal roofing, it's every lineal feet is one foot long and three feet wide, which is the equivalent of three square feet. So if we take 3,192 divided by 3, we also get 1,064. Either way works fine. Now we'll take our 1,064 lineal feet, multiply it by the 885, and we get 9,416.40. So in this case, because it's going to last 45 years, we only need to replace it once in the 40 years. So uh, in this case, it looks like the metal comes out slightly ahead. It's not by a lot. And we need to remember that there's lots of extra costs in here that have not been calculated. Those would need to be, such as the substrate we need to put underneath, uh, screws in the case of metal, roof cap. For shingles, we have the nails or staples. We have the substrate as well. So there's lots of things that calculate into this. This is a very basic demonstration, but it gives an idea of how all the different pieces of math come together. So for these real world scenarios, there's nothing majorly new it's a matter of pulling together lots of different types of math, conversions, ratios, um, trigonometry possibly, and knowing when and how to use each of these types of math to pull them all together to make sense of a single problem. So I hope you learned something from these, and we'll see you again in another one.